Hi there, I'm Rex King. Welcome back to another episode of From the Archive. Today we are talking about Dragonheart. So Dragonheart actually started out as a pitch from uh, Patrick Reed Johnson to uh, producer Raffaella De Laurentiis as what would happen if the Last Knight and Last Dragon teamed up to defraud villagers. Uh, De Laurentiis really liked the idea and brought it to Universal, who got behind the project initially with Johnson as the director. Johnson then turned to Charles Edward Pogue to help him finish up the script, and apparently the final script they ended up writing was very emotional. It actually apparently brought several Universal executives to tears. So they then went off to Spain with uh, Jim Henson Creature Shop to do a test to see what uh, Draco would look like with practical effects. However, a couple things ended up happening here. One... Universal caught wind of another film coming out called Jurassic Park in which a studio called Industrial Light and Magic would be using new cutting-edge CGI technology. They decided to wait to see what that would look like as it might help them bring Draco to the big screen. Furthermore, they were not pleased with the creature shop test and felt it might be indicative of the final project, especially if they went with Johnson as director, though that's the entire point of a test. It's not the final product, it's just to see what the product could look like given certain conditions. Mine, but hey, they didn't like it, so that's what they decided to do. They ended up basically delegating uh, Johnson to just screenwriting credits and an executive producer credit. They then went out to find another director. A couple directors stepped up to the plate, including Richard Donner and Kenneth Branagh. However, the studio inevitably went with Rob Cohen who had found success with A Dragon, A Bruce Lee Story. And um, so they decided to bring him on board. However, that did not sit well with the writers, who felt that Rob Cohen really destroyed their emotional project, as he went more for a friendly, uh, family-friendly vibe. And they also were not pleased with the cuts he ended up making, uh, including... Putting the, making the Queen more of a bit player in this movie, and also uh, cutting a scene in which Bowen, who's played by Dennis Quaid, and Gilbert, who's played by uh, Peter Pauzelwaite, I apologize if I mispronounced that name, um, in which they are basically discussing their motivations, they also ended up cutting the uh, romance entirely out between um, Bowen and Kara, played by Dina Mayer, uh, out of the film as they felt like it really was better to make her more of an action hero. The film then went into casting and went through a couple actors for the key roles. Initially when it came to uh, Bowen they had looked at actors uh, like uh, Gilbert Byrne, uh, Pierce Brosnan, Liam Neeson, and um, just to name a few, until inevitably they decided on Dennis Quaid. Uh, as for the um, uh, the main uh, female character, um, Kara, they went from a couple different actresses. None of them really stood out until they found um, Dina Mayer, who was kind of an unknown at the time, but they felt like she had the physical prowess to be an action-oriented character and really felt that she captured the character of Kara quite well. Um, as for Draco, they, that was always going to be Sean Connery. That was the entire intent behind making Draco. Even though the studio wanted to go with someone maybe like Whoopi Goldberg, it was always inevitably going to be Sean Connery behind Draco. Then the film went off and started production. It was then released on March 30th, 1996. And it was hugely successful financially. It made $151 million on a budget of $57 million. Uh, furthermore, critics, though they felt the story was weak, praised its uh, visual style, when they, especially the uh, CG around Draco, as they felt it was very forward-thinking and looked really well. It actually earned an Oscar nomination for its visual effects. So... How is Dragonheart? Is it a good epic? Or has it not aged all that well like a lot of 90s projects? Well, let's talk about it. So Dragonheart follows Bowen, played by Dennis Quaid, and uh, 
uh, who is this older knight. He really uh, is the last knight of the old code who serves this king and the king's son, um, Ainan, who later on in the movie uh, is played by um, David Fwells. I probably mispronounced that name as well. And, uh, however, on the first battle that Ainan witnesses, he gets mortally wounded and his father dies. Ainan is then brought before a dragon to uh, heal him, and the dragon agrees on the condition that Ainan rules with um, a kind heart. He ends up giving Ainan half of his heart to let him survive. However, Ainan becomes even more crueler there than his father was, enslaving all the peasants who had revolted earlier, and just causing their lives to be all sorts of hell. Bowen believes that this is all the dragon's fault and swears vengeance. Years later, Bowen is now killing dragons left and right, and he basically confronts the last dragon in uh, Draco, uh, who reveals that he's the last dragon and kind of makes a deal with him, since if uh, Bowen kills him, then he'll be out of a job. They both realize that they need to work with each other to basically survive in this new world. Meanwhile, Ainan is cruel as ever, and is basically just doing a bunch of uh, dickish things, and is kind of a brat to, like, everyone. However, when uh, Kara comes back into the mix, uh, and he basically almost rapes her, when she finally gets away from Ainan, he, uh, she um, ends up running into Bowen and Draco, and ends up starting a kind of sort of friendship with the two, and she tries to encourage them to rebel against uh, Ainan. However, Bowen, who has become disillusioned with the old code and the way of the world currently is, really doesn't want to help until he sees a vision of King Arthur, because of course he does. Um, and he then decides to uh, help bring down Ainan. The film, honestly, is kind of fun. It's a really funny story of uh, two, an unlikely duo, uh, a dragon and a knight, working together to survive in a cruel world, uh, while well, each understands that they really don't belong together. Uh, Draco is clearly trying to find some like way of redemption because of the fact that his heart was the one that was used to revive Ainan, and Ainan has gone on to do a bunch of chaos, while Bowen has just basically lost his way entirely, and really needs something to bring him back into the fold to be an honorable person once again. I really like the dynamic between Drago and uh, Bowen, and when the film is focusing on these two and their journey, it's really well done. Unfortunately, uh, I do feel like this film could have been a lot better if it took itself a little bit more seriously, as a lot of the situation is just not as funny as I think some of the filmmakers thought it was going to be. It really felt like some of the jokes didn't really age well and didn't feel all that funny. They just felt really like sh uh, slammed in there for no real reason. Then you have the characters and all the characters are pretty good for the most part. I really like Bowen and Draco's relationship like I said earlier and Kara as an action-oriented uh, female character is ahead of her time especially for the 1990s. Then you have the villain in Ainan and... The intent with this guy was to make him more of a smart villain, but he just comes off as a whiny brat that I really don't fear, and I just don't understand why anyone follows this guy. He's a jerk to even, like, his loyal subjects. I don't really understand why he's such a threat. I feel like anyone would have rebelled against him eons ago and had a successful revolt because I don't see anyone willingly following this guy. Anyway, um, then you have the performances, which are all spectacular. I, I really liked Sean Connery as the voice of Draco. I liked Dennis Quaid as Bowen. And I felt Dina Mayer did a great job as um, uh, Kara. And though I didn't like Ainan, I did like uh, David Fell's, uh interpretation of the character. And his performance was really good. I just wish he was given more to work with.
As far as the visuals are concerned, there are going to be a split camp here, as the CGI on Draco can be hit or miss at times. And some of the darker scenes, it works really well, and I felt like his design was pretty well thought out. However, there are definitely some times when it's just Draco on screen that he just has this really weird look on his face, and it just feels so off, and it just doesn't really, like, help the movie at all. And... That's partially because the CGI hasn't aged as well as it could have. Also, let's not forget that as far as CGI characters goes, Draco was one of the earliest adaptations. I mean, we have Jurassic Park, which the dinosaurs are on it for like uh, 16 minutes as far as the CGI dinosaurs go. And then you have Draco, who's in the movie for like a full like 30, 40 minutes and he's also a character who's supposed to speak, and he's a fully realized character as, far as, as opposed to the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, who are just obstacles. So, yeah, I don't blame some of the bad CGI in this film. I think it's fine. Honestly, I've seen a lot worse, even from today's standards. Uh, it's just that there are some moments that just don't feel right at all. And then you have the music, and oh my god. So the composer here is Randy Edelman, and dear lord, this score is iconic. Like, there's only like 11 to 15 tracks, and it's never been re-released, so we haven't gotten more tracks. But god, is this one of the better soundtracks I have ever listened to. Uh, you, you, If you like fantasy and you like fantasy soundtracks, you gotta check this one out. There's... Uh, a lot of synthesized music, which doesn't usually work in a fantasy setting. Normally you want to go with some more acoustic instruments. But man, does Elman's composition pieces lend itself so well to that piece of instrumentation that he brings to the score. At the end of the day, Dragonheart is a good time. And as far as is it a um, buy, stream, or avoid altogether, well, let's talk about the special features. The special features have a making of, a commentary with Rob Cohen, outtakes, and a theatrical trailer. Not the most amazing Blu-ray as far as special features are concerned, but the movie itself is very important to history, as again, this is one of the earliest cases of a fully CGI realized character taking a major part in the movie. So, as far as that is concerned, I think, I believe that Dragonheart is a buy. The special features are good, and the story and uh, overall quality of the film is quite enjoyable, and I do recommend giving it a watch if you haven't seen it. I do believe that this is a worthy addition to any collector, and I do believe that if you want to point out the importance of film history, you definitely need to own this uh, particular film. Anyway, that's what I felt about Dragonheart. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And next time... We'll be taking a look at Million Dollar Arm. See you then.